Hello everyone and welcome to Packaging and Pricing Strategies. I'm Gary Pika with True Methods here with uh, the host of our webinar and kindly enough to, to put on this, uh, Neil Bradbury of Intronus. Hey Neil. Hey Gary, how you doing? Great, and we also have Lee Len DiCostanzo from Autotask. Uh, we got a lot of hardware on this call today. A lot of hardware, baby. A lot of hardware. I'm a little intimidated, though, Len. I don't normally get on, you know, webinars with someone who I who maybe has more been around doing this longer than me. Uh, I think I think we're close. I, I got about 30 years in, Gary. I, I may look like a young little dude on there, but got 30 years in. But I'm sure you can hold your own along with Neil. All right. Well, well, listen. We got some great perspectives, right? And so, uh, with me through building a couple MSPs and and working with hundreds of MSPs in my coaching program, uh, and Neil and Len, uh, you guys out there working with partners every day uh, are in the middle of this thing. So I think we're going to bring a lot of perspective to this issue, this important issue of packaging and pricing. So let's dive in. I want to kind of set the stage uh... for things and talk about you know hey why do we do this and what are the goals and what's possible in this business and so i, I came up with this term that i use called world-class msp and it's my definition of really not best in class but those people that are achieving the thriving organizations what are they able to achieve and here's what it looks like those top companies are generating new mrr or monthly recurring revenue at the right price every month they're getting prices that are 120 to 160 dollars on average per seat, or average all-in seat price. So they're generating a, a, a number I call leverage, which is 150 thousand dollars or more of annual service revenue, based on not just every tech but every employee. And I'll show you what that looks like. And that yields margins, true margins of 25 to 35 percent, in great opportunities. And, and your uh, support offering has a lot to do with this. Now, to put this in perspective, an average company in our industry, okay, with 12 employees, annually generates about 1.2 million dollars of total services revenue. Best in class, about 1.5, where the top companies generate 1.8. And Len, if you look at that, you probably, like me, know companies that fall into all three of these categories. You know, they have the same risk, the same payroll, the same, you know, everything except uh, they generate, so, and most of that additional service revenue, right, would fall right to the bottom line. Oh, totally. I mean, really, uh, there's just such, uh, so many factors that go into pricing and revenue and profitability. And if you just look at utilization rate in the break-fix model, you know, a 60% utilization versus 80% can make that difference up pretty quickly. So I, I just point to that as a key variable all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think about it, if you're selling recurring revenue, it really starts with your support offering. It's at the center of it. And mistakes you make here, they impact your ability to deliver quality service, get the kind of margins we're talking about. And they also impact your ability to sell. An interesting thing about this business that's different than a lot of others is that uh, the top companies, the ones that are adding the most recurring revenue, almost always are the ones that are also selling at the upper end of the price range where in most businesses you know you have high volume and lower price but for the reasons we're going to talk about today um, the people that sell the most are also the ones that are commanding the highest price which is a little counterintuitive but I hope it makes sense and here's really what this is about when you talk about your support offering okay what you offer to every one of your customers for a monthly fee it really needs to be unique to you okay and I call that defining your company way what is your unique proc, uh, process to deliver value and how are you going to impact your customers business so is every one of your customers better off are they more productive can they generate more revenue with fewer amount of employees because of the unique process that you bring them and you know they're doing business with you because you have knowledge and experience that they think will benefit them but how will you institutionalize your knowledge and experience the only way we can do that is if we have the right service offering at the right price that allows us to do that and here's an analogy that I like to use it's the difference between a grocery store and a bakery a grocery store 
Uh, all grocery stores have the same ingredients that are on their shelves. And they're a high volume business, a commodity type business, a low margin business because although you might like one store over the other, you're not going to pay a dollar fifty more for a can of green beans, okay? Now with bakers, they also have the same agreements. But I, I you know, Neil, I don't know about you, but I'll drive past in fact yesterday was my daughter's birthday. I drive drove past about five bakeries to get to the one that my wife told me to go to because that's the cake that she likes and she doesn't care whether it costs twenty four dollars or twenty eight dollars because that's the cake we have on birthdays. Are you with me on that? I'm absolutely with you. It's all about the cake, not the ingredients. That's it. And so if you relate that to our business, are you a reseller or an MSP? And I could have five pages of stuff on here, and it's growing with the cloud evolution, but we have all these things in uh, hardware and licensing and patch and spy and spam and virtualization and hardware as a service, desktops, backup and disaster recovery, all of these things, and, you know, are you, is that what you're selling? Are you selling these ingredients, or are you wrapping those in your recipe, or what we call your company way, so that people will, will pay more and drive past three or four other MSPs to get to yours? And so this is the point we want to make. And a real quick check you can do here is this. You know, as we start talking about the support offering, how to put it together, ask yourself this question. You know, how much of what you sell today are ingredients? How much of what you're putting in front of your customer and selling them is why they should be doing business with you is what I call the everybody stuff. Everyone does support. Everyone has some level of automation. Everyone is doing backup and disaster recovery in some way, offering help desk. And everybody has or will have access to all the same cloud services, right? And so, uh, or how much of what you're selling is unique to you, your recipe? your process and people, your best practices, how you do standardization, the way that you consult around this. And if you're looking at this and saying, well, most of what we're selling is on the left-hand side, the everybody stuff, you're probably feeling downward price pressure. Um, you're struggling a little bit with your sales model to get consistency. And you're not achieving the margins that you thought you would when you made this huge commitment at some point to change your, your business model. And this is what we want to address. How do you do that? How do you package your recipe, your company way, and how do you show your clients the value? And I think, Len, right now, this is more important than ever as we move into the cloud um, evolution, and there's more and more features available to more and more people, and I think you're seeing that out there as well, right? Oh, sure. Uh, obviously, the cloud is uh, very popular. It almost reminds me, Gary, of when managed service became a popular term uh, back a few years back, which is quite a few years after it actually hit the market. So yeah. you, know, you throw cloud into your catalog and now you've got a, a plethora of solutions you can, you can bring to bear for sure. Okay, so let's talk about how we take all this great technology and it's all great for us and it's all great for our customers assuming that we're going to present it in the right way and be able to differentiate ourselves. This is what I see the typical managed service offering look like. Um, basically, people are selling support, right, remote and, uh, and or on-site, and some basic automation. They're putting their RMM out there. They're doing some monitoring, some patch and spy and spam. And hopefully, Neil, in addition to that, everybody today is out there with um, backup and disaster recovery um, as, part of that, uh, as part of that offering. Um, but the question I have is, does this really define your company way? And are you really, this is to me the everybody stuff, and are you going out there and telling a prospective customer that they should do business with you, that you can take care of them better, and underneath it you're saying, look, I'm going to use the exact same model the current vendor does, except I can answer a phone better and I can patch a computer better than somebody else. And, and then wondering why you're getting commoditized and why sales seems to be an uphill battle and you feel there's price pressure. So does this define your company way? I'm going to suggest today, based on you know my 17 years as an MSP uh, and working with hundreds of MSPs, that where the average or the typical managed service offering ends is where your needs, yours needs to begin. So it's not just support. It's not just centralized services. But it's really building your company way in the form of proactive network administration. And I'm going to dive in detail exactly what that process looks like 
and technology consulting or VCIO, virtual CIO, which everyone says they do, but we're going to put a stricter definition on it today and ask yourself, hey, how much process and resources are you putting into this? And I'm hopefully when we get to the end and we get some help from Neil and from Len, you'll see how this all fits together and how you can make changes that will make a dramatic difference in your business in 2014. So here's support, right? On-site and remote. Quality support is important, right? It's really where the rubber meets the road. But all MSPs say that they have good support. I don't think anyone, if you ask them, would say, you know, they stink at it. But how can you differentiate yourself? I mean, can you really tell a customer, you know, we, we have better people, we have more certifications, and really have them translate in the fact that you're going to take such better care of them because you're answering the phone. And Neil, what, I, what I'm saying here is they don't know what your support is until after they do business with you, right? It's true. Until they experience it, how can you, you got to be able to differentiate it and sell it before they actually, uh, you know, before they sign up. And, and that's hard to do, and it's hard, especially if you need to charge them more to offer the right offering. It's hard to get them to invest more when you're just telling them the same thing the last vendor told them. And I'll take it a step further with, you know, with centralized services. Now here, process can make a big difference, okay? However, from the outside, from the prospect standpoint, you know, everybody, you know, the centralized service, things you're doing with, with your RMM, your automation, your cloud features, and everyone has access to that same technology today. And I know, Len, in the very beginning when the RMMs came out um, way back, you know, they were, you had to buy them up front, and they were really expensive, and so not everybody could have them. There was probably a 12 to 18 month period where it actually for a short time was a competitive advantage, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that long before there was more RMMs and they were figured out how to make them easy for the people in the channel to get that everybody has one today. And the same thing's happening with cloud features. And I, you remember back, right, when it, for a short time that was, that was a competitive advantage? Oh, sure. I mean, I remember uh, we used HP OpenView, and you really, it was like $185 a node, and you had to drop in a VPN connection just to hit the machine you needed. So it certainly come a long way and uh, made easy to use or made easier to use for sure. Yeah, so the point here is we hopefully learn something from that to know that this time as we go through this, that you know, we continue to move more features to the cloud that everyone knows up front that um, those features are going to be available to every MSP and that over time they're going to go down in price, right, uh, based on, um, you know, at the capital investments and the scale that companies in the channel get, and that's, that's natural. So again, is this the part where we can really differentiate ourselves compared to someone else? I, I'm saying this is where it happens in proactive network administration, establishing both a role and a process that will show you where you can do real standardization, have best practices for your client's technology, something that is really your company way, and then be able to align from a technical standpoint all of your customers' environments with those standards, and if we do that and we keep them more aligned, that we can reduce the noise. And Neil, we, we measured something in, in my MSP, we teach our members how to do this, that we call tickets per month per endpoint. So based on, the, based on your client base and how many endpoints you have deployed, how many tickets get created. And you know, average MSPs that don't have this level of standardization that we're going to show you, they generate anywhere from 1 to 1.5 tickets a month per endpoint. We set a target of 0.5 tickets a month per endpoint, and I ran my first MSP when it matured as low as 0.2 tickets a month per endpoint. Now think about that for a second, right? You know, you're, you know, an average MSP, their customer is dealing, each, every one of their users is dealing with an issue every, you know, two to three weeks, as opposed to in my business where my customers were dealing with issues every two to three months. That's dramatic value, right? Suddenly huge value. I mean, the cost savings alone is huge. It, 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 it's both of them, right? It's value and you're also being able to scale your MSP. It, it's impressive. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you that, um, you know, margin, right, is a huge competitive advantage in this business, and that's how you create opportunity for your employees, how you take better care of your customers. So, um, but you can't do this unless you have standards developed. And I, when, I, when I do live presentations, I always ask this question, how many people here feel that if 
they had a greater level of standardization of technology across their customer base that their customers and they would be better off and every single hand goes up every hand so my question is well why don't you and the main reason is a um, you don't have a role you don't have a process for it to do it and maybe you're not figuring that into the costing of your model so that you can afford to do it so your customers can get those benefits and so if you think about it this could be three pages but this is just some of the stuff that I mean that what we do is complicated right we have all these things and we need to have standards like everybody in our business needs to know how to configure backup there's probably 30 things that we want to know about the way that backup and disaster recovery you know and Neil I'll let you speak to that in a minute but just how a router is set up how a firewall there's all this detail that goes on and how do we get and keep people aligned over time and so here's an example that we take all these areas and this one here the top would be internal security and underneath that would be just one piece of it domain policy and underneath that would be one question you know are complex passwords on or off yes or no and you know that one question doesn't necessarily uh, you know create tons of risk for most of our customers but that question along with you know hundreds and hundreds of other questions underneath all those categories we showed you know sections and categories we showed you makes a huge difference it's the difference between 1 to 1.5 tickets a month for endpoint and, and 0.5 or 0.2 tickets a month for endpoint. Uh, it's dramatic, okay? And um, so if you, I'm sorry, and so if, you, so if you think about it, you know, how many things would we like to be the same? And it has to be done over time. This is constant alignment. Uh, Neil, in my, in, time I've been in this business many I, I can't tell you how many times we get in front of a new customer prospective customer when they're having some issue that's how we got in front of them and so now they have a server that's down and we fix it and we go to the backup and how many times doesn't it operate the way that they thought it that thought it would and created you know some amount of risk or, or cost to them and a year ago when it was put in it was tested and worked fine but in the course of a year, servers were added, taken out, users came and went, applications were upgraded, a lot of things happened. So this kind of alignment needs to happen on an ongoing basis. Like I almost picture like there's this box that we're trying to push our customers in. And then there's picture like this blob around the box, and we're trying to always see where they fall in our standards and out of our standards. Does that make sense? No, it makes, it makes absolute sense. It's, it's definitely that proactive management, and it also allows an MSP to add additional value as well. Abs absolutely. And here's how we start to show that value, okay? So now, we, on a regular basis, we go to our customers. We go look at all that technology that we showed you, and we're asking all the right questions about where they fall in and out. So now we're starting to get more and more standard configurations, and we're looking where they're out of alignment with, with our company way or our standards. And we know that when they're within our standards, they're going to get predictable results. And we need to show them now where they're out of our standards is their business risk. So what's the business impact of that technology alignment? And once we do that, we can get into a planning process, a budgeting process, a strategy. Right? We're going to leverage that network administration, all that information that we have, and say, okay, listen, we looked at all these things. Here's where you are out of technical alignment. Now we've looked at those things, and based on what we know about your business, where are we out of, um, uh, what, what risk does that create for your business? And, you know, you hear this word trusted advisor all the time. It's really overused. I mean, anyone who's in IT and gets paid a dollar is a trusted advisor, right? That's why they pay us. But if you don't have a process for how you look at and do your consulting, then two things are always certain. One, you can't deliver the same knowledge and experience to every customer as you scale. And two, you're not getting paid for it, right? Um, so again, just like technology consulting, this needs to be a process and it needs to be a role. So we go back to those misalignments and say, is Active Directory configured, yes or no? For some customers, you know, it might be a garden center. Um, it might not be an issue for them, and so it doesn't create business risk. But if you are uh, maybe in the medical field and subject to HIPAA compliance, that would be a major impact to you. So now we take that same question and we decide, you know, is this an issue for them, yes or no? 
And here's the key to it. We need to be having business conversations with every one of our customers. And so I created this report many years ago. I called the technology summary where you take all that information we talked about and create a two or three page summary report that you can go to a customer and say, listen, we look at 1,200 things on a regular basis. Of those, here's the part that we're at a technical alignment. Of those, here's the ones that we need to talk about. These are the ones that you know, are affecting your business. They're creating opportunities. They're creating risk. They're creating costs. There's something around these that you and I need to have a business conversation so that you can make good decisions. You know, and when I first went out and did these meetings, um, I, you know, I used to go out with you know, patch status reports and every ticket that we did, and I couldn't get decision makers to come back to review. They didn't care as much about patch management as I did. But when I turned it into a business conversation uh, like this, they all would come back. And they all would invest and say the same thing. I never felt like I could make decisions around technology until it was kind of presented in this organized way. And they were willing to spend more. In fact, about 25 cents of service revenue annually for every dollar of recurring revenue that we had. It was that predictable. So, you know, again, stepping back from it, you know, which makes more sense? How can you separate yourself in, in the future? as we add all of these features by just offering centralized services and support and selling line items or by adding uh, or adding your company way and having roles in which to do that and so when it comes to your service offering you know focusing on that end result making sure that all the people and process technology in enough time and you're charging enough okay so that you can deliver this these roles and this process to every customer and really impact their business Clear, clearly define your edges, what's included and what's not included in your monthly fee. Again, really key. And if you do this, you're going to have to limit choices and options. There isn't 10 right ways to do this, okay? And so uh, you can't go to them and say, look, here's all the process we want to bring, but if you want to pay for that, you know, you can have my crappy silver program and I'll only do half of what I know is going to be the best thing for you. And so ultimately summing this all up it's all about bundling services you want to bundle as much value and process into your monthly fee as you can so that the customer doesn't have to make choices that they're not qualified what virus protection they're going to use what backup they're going to use they're not qualified the best thing for them to use okay because they don't really want backup and virus they want the protection that comes from it and you can deliver that better when you've chosen the right solutions, when you've standardized on them, and when you can deliver them in a cost-effective way and deliver that end result. So, Neil, with that, let's, take it, let's talk about bundling, take it one step further, and talk specifically. There probably isn't a better example to talk about how you can do that and the impact you can have on your business and your customers than we talk about uh, backup and disaster recovery. Absolutely. Thanks, Gary. And I think, you know, to your point, bundling backup is, it's really about the cake that you're delivering to the customers, not necessarily the, the feature function. Um, customers don't really care what software is being used. Um, they want to make sure that their data is protected. They want to make sure if something happens. What are those business risks that you are addressing um, by bundling in uh, cloud backup and recovery? Um, we have an example here from uh, Chris Johnson. Uh, he from Untangled Solutions, and he is essentially bundling uh, BDR into every single managed services deal that he does. Uh, not only does it allow him to increase the revenue of those deals, but it also allows him to reduce cost. And I'll tell you how we do that in the next slide. For um, for him as well, and we'll go back one slide, Gary. Sorry, I, I okay. strategically sorry, paused buddy. there, out of out of, out of place. Um, okay. The other thing for for Chris um, is if a customer doesn't understand. Uh, that they need to protect their data as part of the bundle, it's not a good customer for him. Um, obviously, he does everything he can in the pre-sales process. He's trying to get them to understand that they need to protect their data. But he knows if he takes that business, as Gary had said, it's, it's fewer options. It's not 20 managed services bundles. There's probably a couple based on the risk of the business. Um, yeah. But he knows he needs to walk away, right? He cannot take that business because he will deviate from his best practices, which will ultimately actually hurt him more than that revenue will help them as a business. Yeah, and we'll so, okay, so a couple things here can I just uh, hit on that I think, that I, think I heard you say. One, when you're bundling it, um, backup in, into your offering, right, so hey, $3,000 a month, and it, it's in there, right, either, you know, because you know what your averages are, um, 
you can choose your price per gig because they're not, you know, rather than the customer seeing it and being subject to what other people are doing. So you can get a higher average price per gig, you know, and I experience this in, in my business. Um, and then the second thing is, um, you know, getting back, you know, all, all the labor involved when you're on the standard solution, Neil. Absolutely. Absolutely. For, I mean, for and us, I, and I think I'll, you're going to address that? Okay. Yeah, I am going to address it. No, but absolutely. If you have a real-world example, Gary, after this slide, I think, Great. you know, there's definitely those two pieces, right? I mean, it's how much, how much revenue can we get from it? Uh, how much does it cost us to offer? And when you're looking for that BDR platform uh, to support your customers, you want something to obviously reduce the cost it takes to manage it and also increase the revenue. And obviously with Intronus, that's what we're here to do. Um, one of the ways that, um, that we do that on the cost side uh, is basically saving time for the technical staff. Um, a few of the ways uh, we do integrations, uh, and Len's on here and he's going to talk about Autotask. Um, we leverage our Autotask and PSA integrations with our partners um, all the time whether it be from ticketing or whether it be from billing management, um, it really does save them time allowing to reduce the cost of the solution. Again, with Intronus, there's a centralized management portal. All of the changes that need to be made are done from one portal. It's no longer interrupting a customer. Um, all the alerts are in one place. So if you do have that NOC staff and you're building your MSP, it's incredibly efficient for them um, to manage uh, that solution. Um, again, when you're looking at different solutions, you want to make sure that they do have that built-in reporting, and it does allow you to reduce the cost. I know, Gary, you were going to kind of give an example of uh, some of the reducing of cost. Did you have an example from some of the, the MSP uh, businesses that you've been involved in? Yeah, I'll tell you I'll, my, from my first MSP. Um, before we standardized and were able to go to, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a solution like Intronus, we had a full-time person who dealt with all of the on-site, all the premise stuff that we had, once we had converted our base over, it was literally 15 to 20 minutes, under a half hour a day. And so that's an FTE. And in my model, one technical FTE based on our packaging pricing is worth about $300,000 of service revenue annually. That's how much capacity it is. So, you know, when you think about bundling, and this is, you've given such a great example, if you can increase your average MRR, if you can lower your cost and then at the same time, at most importantly, give more value more to, to the client, in this case in the form of, uh, of protection and reducing risk, they're the three bells you want to ring every time. So think about every feature just like this one, Neil. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you, using the strategies that we've just discussed, Gary, you know, bundling the BDR offering and, and then picking a BDR offering that helps reduce the management cost, uh, it ultimately does give you that higher value uh, BDR offering for your clients. Um, one customer that we have is, is Parallel Edge based out of Pennsylvania. Um, they've been able to save time and money uh, thanks to the integrations, the reporting, uh, and bundling it. Um, again, they're not fully 100% reoccurring, but I know that um, not all businesses are. But 60% of their subscription revenue, 60% of their revenue was able to come from subscription uh, by doing this type of bundling with the different services that we've mentioned, backup, antivirus, et cetera. Um, so they've truly been able to turn around their business, um, and they're expecting that 60% of 2.7 to grow even more uh, in 2013, and I've seen uh, big things uh, from that partner. So it's exciting to see them, uh, as they've joined Intronus for the last couple of years, be able to take that same model and apply it to some of the other services and, and really uh, create a reoccurring revenue stream. They're a great company. Uh, they're here in my marketplace. I, I've known them and uh, the ownership team for, for years, and yeah, you're right. They've actually taken this, and you guys have helped them a lot in terms of, you know, the way you approached it and, your, and the thinking you've given them, and they've, they've listened and uh, made a big impact. It's awesome. Absolutely. And I think i got one more slide here, Gary. And, and really, um, by the way, everyone that's listening to this webinar today, um, the three of us on here, if you do have questions, feel free to ask them uh, in the GoToWebinar uh, panel in the bottom right there. Um, as, as we can mix in questions, we absolutely will. Um, my last slide here is obviously the, the commercial slide, but uh, it, it's a short slide. Uh, Intronus, uh, we're the leader in cloud backup and disaster recovery for MSPs. Uh, our mission, as it always has been, is to make MSPs more successful by delivering the world's best cloud backup solution for resellers who solve the small and medium-sized businesses. We are 100% dedicated to serving the IT channel, and we don't sell direct, so we're not going to compete with you. Uh, our backup solution offers highly secure data centers in the U.S. and Canada, providing excellent reliability 
reliability, ooh, and security at no additional charge. We currently have 2,000 partners worldwide and are backing up data for more than 45,000 endpoints. Intronus assists MSPs with compliance for both healthcare and financial industries, such as HIPAA and FINRA, especially with our uh, military-grade encryption um, that is all data is encrypted on-site before it is uploaded to our cloud. We continue to invest in our technology and services, and recently we added our U.S.-based partner success team. Uh, this team combines our technical support staff, training team, and partner management team to be there for you if or when uh, you ne the need arises. In addition, we're seeing great traction with our image-based technologies uh, for VMware, and uh, we're excited to be here, and I thank everyone for attending. Hey, Gary, back to you. And we can get awesome. continue the, uh, the bundling presentation. Awesome. Great job. Okay, so I think that really fit in and drove home. Uh, and again, I, I, the point I want to make is everybody taking the great example you just gave and think about every single feature and the same concepts apply. So good packaging should explain the reason a prospect should buy. You should give them a reason why their business and their life is going to be different, not just telling them you're going to be doing the same thing that better that their vendor that they're changing from is doing and make it easy for them to understand the end result Neil you know as a business owner you know I understand process right and always trying to have more process in my business and when you talk to a business owner in those terms and you show them hey not just that we have certifications but here's we have a process and here's the result of it I, I know because I've been on probably 1400 sales calls in this industry um, it changes everything and then you're going to work to align your offering with your service delivery. So, you know, we show that packaging and pricing, and we show those four delivery areas, and we talked about them, you know, in, in detail, a few of them. Well, th you have to actually define roles and responsibilities so you can deliver that and be able to measure the success in terms of the impact on your customer, but also your costs and how they affect your margins. And, and, and so um, one of those things, okay, is, is pricing. And when you're pricing your offering, I tell people, keep it simple. You shouldn't have, when I started, I made it complicated. I had spreadsheets and slide rolls and abacus. Uh, you know, I threw the kitchen sink at it. And ultimately, okay, you don't want to have to ask the customer 20 questions or do a network analysis to give them a price. I like to say, don't share your pricing psychosis with your customer. Here's all they care about. How are you going to help my business and how much is it going to cost per month? So use... Your average is, this business is all about averages. What your average all-in seat price is, in other words, if you take all of your recurring revenue, revenue monthly and then all of the seats that you support and divide it, that's on average what you charge. And today, you know, we see average MSPs that they're, they're around $100 all-in seat price. Top MSPs for the right offering that we talked about today that are showing value, they're getting $120 to $150 depending on how much how much how many cloud features they they have in there so that and also your average MRR look at what your average deal size is you want to try to keep your average monthly recurring revenue from each client that average above eighteen hundred dollars a month because when it falls below that your margins go down so if you think about it don't get hung up on this step back set a target for average on C price and average MRR and then just make sure however you do a pricing calculator that over time you can hit those averages and project the model imagine that you had 25 or 30 or 50 customers just like the one you're targeting what would your business look like what would your margins and the last thing if you only take one thing away from this webinar today is this your price is not too high if you don't do anything else Go ahead and raise your prices 20%. Um, and don't ask your customers or your employees, because, uh, Len, I can already tell you what they would say if you ask them about price, and they're, they're going to tell you they're already too high. But um, uh, you, you can get more if you're showing the right value. And, and well, here's what happens. I, I, go ahead, I go ahead Len. Sold. I, I was never the cheapest uh, tool in the shed or whatever the heck that saying is, Gary. you just got to understand the value you're bringing and especially understand all of the different services you're providing. So definitely you can get more money for what you're bringing to the table. Yeah, I, I'm going to estimate that I've closed about 300 or so managed service uh, contracts in my career. And um, if, the, if it was 300 and 295 of them, two things were certain. Um, one, the customers thought they were fine before they met me. 
Uh, and two, I almost always had to charge them more than what they were spending currently to give them better results. And they were happy to pay it based on the packaging and pricing that we, that we share today. Because ultimately, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to generate the most amount of revenue with the fewest amount of employees, right? And so leverage is, is, is a concept that I teach in my coaching program. It's the relationship between an hour work and a dollar build. And, you know, in the beginning I said, hey, we set one that's a good metric, which is taking all of your service revenue divided by the total number of employees, and that gives you a good gauge of how efficient you are and, and how your packaging and pricing is working for you. And to give an example, an average MSP with six employees would generate about $600,000 of just service revenue, not product, just combined all services. If you divide that, that's about $100,000 of annual service revenue per employee. At True Methods, we set a target of $150,000 of service revenue annually per employee. So the same company with six employees would be generating $900,000 of annual service revenue. So that average MSP would have $300,000 of unrealized profitability in their business. And getting that out, that's what this business is about. That's the difference between a, someone who built themselves a good job and one that's achieving their financial goals and building a thriving business. And so, Len, it's a perfect segue into the fact that one reason, and packaging and pricing on the front end is one reason why people's um, leverage and margins aren't what they should be. But the other reason is they don't know how to track their costs because it's more complex and with multiple people touching that revenue. So maybe you can speak to that and what you know, you've learned with helping partners about how to get control of their costs. Yeah, sure. Great, great lead in, too. And, and certainly, uh, for those who don't know, I actually had my own little solution right of business for about 25 years or so. So got a lot of experience winning new business and then converting them from break fix to managed services. And it all boils down to what you just said, Gary, that that revenue per employee and whether that employee works in a break fix model on a project or against managed service contracts, it all boils down to what is their cost? What is the cost for an individual employee? And if you can't track that cost versus what you're selling that body for, and therefore the, the profitability, it's going to be pretty tough to either A, improve your price and understand where you're making money or not. And it all starts with the tools you're using. We've already talked about Intronus and uh, how they can add a, a wonderful service into your package. And what Autotest lets you do is right at the hourly rate level, you can begin to track an employee's cost across every service, across every contract. And there's, I have a pricing webinar myself where I drill down into how to get an hourly rate and then how to take that hourly rate and that body and lead into pricing for package services. And it all starts not only with the hourly rate, but the five key variables that go into that hourly rate. And you see some of them represented right here. What's the availability or the forecasted utilization rate on the data availability side? those hours that they can't work, vacation, personal, sick, key variables as you calculate costs. So you want to make sure you have a place to put all those key variables and all that information. And as you move from this slide to the next, that hourly cost and all of the time available to bill needs to be tracked. Here you see another uh, resource screen in Autotask where the summary of hours, the total hours worked, both internal and with a client, and that internal time right there, very key. I like to call that beach time. That's that unutilized or non-billable time that falls into your overhead and ultimately drives up your cost across all, all of your services, all your packages. You really want that client side uh, hourly total to really be pretty high. And more importantly, target a utilization rate where you can actually meet it. Because if you target or forecast a utilization rate of 80%, calculate your hourly rate based on that, next thing you know, you hit 60%. You just ate away a bunch of profit. And I may be talking and you hourly can't, rate. And you can't get time down. back. You can't make it up. You still you only have the same amount up. of hours available the next month. A wise man once told me, you only have a certain amount of hours in your life and in a year. And, and a lot of folks work off of 2,080 hours. But the key is, Track those hours, understand what you're doing with them, and from here, from this particular screen, now that you see the end result of all the time you're recording, what ends up happening on the next slide here, Gary, is you can begin to track all that time against those packages. So as Gary's talking right. about packages, 
you can actually build those packages in the service catalog in Autotask, and the cost for each service in the package can be defined, rolled up, and now you have this cost for your packages, for the individual services in the package, and you can tie it to a contract. Doesn't that look like what you might want to do, Gary? A a absolutely, and uh, uh, I'm cheating ahead to the next slide where you're going to kind of br start to bring it together. It's it's awesome. Yeah, well, right here, I mean, you've got to oh, start sorry. with some yeah. of the basics, and as you define your services here, your bundles and your cost and selling, you go to that next slide, you now can quote those services, and then once you win that business, you tie it into a contract and take all the costs from the body, it all starts with the resource delivering those services and the time they're putting against the services and the contract, multiple people touching it, it's all going to roll up into this contract screen. Not only will you see all of your costs in one spot, but you're going to see your profitability, which of course is your revenue minus those costs. And you really want to uh, have this view because ultimately as you go to the next slide, you know you're going to have a couple of different billing relationships with your client and you want to see what an overall account profitability is. You may have that package managed service offering, but you also may have some overflow contracts to cover those services not in your package. Everybody talks about all you can eat, and I always like to say I love buffets, Gary. It's a lot when you want to hit an all you can eat buffet, and you really can't do it. Some of it has to be outside the all you can eat package, right. and you might have a time and material overflow Break fix doesn't go away in the managed service world. You got projects. fixed price for projects. And right here you could see overall account profitability, but the profitability of each individual contract all rolled up into one spot. So you're hitting, Len, really on what happens of why people work so hard to change their model and they end up with the same leverage and same margins as they did. This is why it's so much more complex of what's going on and the only way to have your arms around it is your people who are doing the work, they just need to do the work and account for their time. And then everything else on the back end that you're showing just needs to be available and be pulled out and presented you know, in, in a simple way. Without that, it's impossible, Len. Sure, and definitely you don't want the engineers and the folks doing the work to really be too concerned because they have enough no. trouble getting their time in <laughs> into whatever system you have. Yep. So put the rules and the structure and the process in place to collect that time and then ultimately as the owner, the director, the manager, uh, you're going to be able to take a look at some of these numbers and then proceed to kind of guide the staff on what they need to do. And what's interesting is I've been in this business so long, Gary, maybe you too can see. I remember everything was T&M and then there was this block yeah. hour billing and you know, incident-based billing and ultimately always flat fee, but uh, now managed services in cloud, the key is you know, Autotask was built for break fix and it's evolved just as the solution provider has and you could see all those typical billing relationships all rolled into one nice screen. As you move into the next slide, we take it from uh, the, the kind of up to the minute on a very specific contract and account and as you're entering that time, that time is filling various buckets inside Autotask and we give you that opportunity to turn all that information into intelligence with performance dashboards where we automatically aggregate that data in the back end and we have over 50 plus pre-configured charts that on top of being pre-configured you might be able to take a look at overall account profitability across the whole business and then drill down into one very specific account and then one very specific contract and as you look at these uh, charts and graphs you're going to see uh, an amazing amount of data displayed very visually and go to that next slide as we kind of drill down you see a few more ways to look at the data I showed you a typical yeah. report on contract profitability and right here you can see revenue by billing type your top five clients your monthly EBITDA versus plan all of those targets that you set as a business owner are the trends leading you to where you want to be are you actually exceeding your targets and more importantly are you not and what are you going to do about it and we always talk about fact-based decision making and even as you move yeah. to the next slide you see when you have all of these facts at your fingertips you're able to make those fact-based decisions and that's where these dashboards really help because ultimately you're in this business to make money and interestingly it took me about 10 years to realize that and hopefully we're helping a couple of you folks out there realize that you may be a technology person 
who's now running a business. But it all comes down to the numbers and your financial performance. And Gary, hit on, hit on to that next slide, because what we'll do is just kind of wrap this up a little yeah, bit. I call it command, on. Len. What's I that? call the word I use with my members is command. You yeah, need to have command. command over the business, and what you just showed is how you gain command. Without command, you don't thrive, you don't hit the margins, and normally you're not going to have the same growth rate. So great stuff. To totally command. I, I think that's a great way to put it. And you know, one of the things that we like to believe here at Autotask is uh, we help you get there. And we've got a lot of resources, over 5,000 partners around the world in 73-plus countries. I put a plus there because every day we're picking up some new country that even I might have trouble spelling. We got our product in seven languages now. We just opened an office in Chicago to give us six offices. We've got folks kind of spotted even around the U.S. and around the globe, over 275 employees now, Gary, to help our folks help you get up and running with Autotask and help to build your business. We've been in the cloud since 2001, so we're pretty much an expert in the cloud and uh, really you know, love to help our, our folks not have to manage a server, not have to manage their own infrastructure, just get up and running and use Autotask. And as we move to the next slide, what we see is where does Autotask help? And I always like to say most people look at Autotask or a PSA or, or a solution like ours as a ticketing system, but having been a solution provider myself, I know there are some real critical stages that you have to go through with a prospect as they become a client. And I've come up with a couple of my own terms too, Gary, like you. And, and what you see here are what Len calls the four critical stage, stages to securing a client for life. And Autotask helps you right from the start. You mentioned consulting. And it all starts in that sales consulting stage. And the integrated CRM module inside Autotask gives you that opportunity to capture all that key data, build that institutional memory, build the quotes for those packages that we saw in the catalog. And as you win that business, you've obviously succeeded in stage one. And now you get that opportunity to drop your solution in and use the Autotask project module to manage that project to profitability and help that client achieve the outcome they wanted by outsourcing to you. And if you do that project well, you've just completed that second stage. And Gary, this is that lead in also to where you talked about standardization. Maybe that first project is that remediation engagement where you go on into that new prospect and you do a little rip and replace. Maybe you do it over time, but ultimately remediate that environment to make it your own. And one of the things I always throw out, you may standardize, but if you don't lock down that environment and keep it standard and you let those users install their own software, connect their own printer, that raises an issue too. So hopefully you remediate, clean the environment up, and then lock it down and take control, like you said, uh, of that environment. And in the second stage, you've earned the right to support and move into that recurring service delivery model. Again, it includes break fix. And that's the auto test service test module, giving you that chance to open tickets, triage service requests, go through the incident management process, change management, problem management, all in a very professional way. And there's that term, Gary. I think it's overused too, trusted advisor. But this slide really, in my mind, help me try to share how I think you might get to that trusted advisor role or become that IT department for the SMB you're working with. Right. Saying or, it and doing it, we, 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 you and I agree, saying it and doing it are two different things. Everyone can say they do it, but without process and the right systems in place, you can't do it. Exactly. And once you get to this trusted advisor level, that's really key. I mean, I always like to say I was the IT, the business technology department, and I was never even the VCIO or the CIO. I was always a BTO, the business technology officer. And whether I was uh, the entire IT department or I supplemented a large enterprise IT outfit, uh, Autotest gives you some of the great features to stay there. And one of the nice things in this managed service model, you're automated, you're a little bit more remote. It's also one of the bad things, but that's why you have those monthly operational reviews those MOR meetings, those more meetings I like to call them, where you're going out and telling them what you did last month, what you're going to do next month, and get them more work. I love that acronym, Monthly Operational Reviews, or QBRs, because once you're that trusted advisor, by the third and fourth quarter, you're proposing their budgets for next year, and in turn, your own revenue forecast, 
and you're right back into that critical stage one, year number two, on your way to retaining that client for life, all with the tools built inside Autotask, and don't forget the integration with Intronus as you're delivering those recurrent services, and they're using storage. The last thing you want to do is go in and put billing information in. The Intronus integration with Autotask backfills that contract, Gary, with the cost of the storage used up and any alerts from a failed backup or a successful backup opens a ticket in Autotask. So integration across platforms, built-in APIs, and the mission-critical data just flows across all the integrated components inside Autotask. And as we go into the next slide, if you're all interested in learning a little bit more, you could send an email to sales at autotask.com, or you could send an email to me. It's my first initial last name at autotask.com. I know it's a tough name, but we've got a couple of specials for anybody who uh, shoots out uh, an email. And uh, up until 1231, you can get some of these uh, uh, discounts. Look forward to hearing from some of you folks out there. And again, thanks, uh, Neil and Gary, for having me on today. Awesome. Hopefully I shared a little bit uh, with the crowd that they can take home. Okay. So um, so let's kind of sum some stuff. We're talking about driving leverage. And you want higher margins, but what you drive is leverage because we run our business with people. So, uh, you know, hopefully people came away today saying, hey, you need to have the right service offering at the right price. And I'll tell you this. Um, I, I meet a lot of people, and, um, and, and I'm in a, a, a different – position, usually when you meet new people, they show you a picture of their kids. When I meet new pictures, Neil, people show me their support offering, okay? And I, <laughs> and I, can, <laughs> yeah, and I can look at it, and without knowing anything else about their business, I can tell you a lot about them. I can tell you what their margins look like within a few percentage, what their sales model looks like, how they're growing or not growing, what their struggles are. Um, and, you know, and I can tell you basically what they're going to look like in another year. So I think that people make mistakes around their service offering, and without knowing it, they've already reduced their chances of achieving their goals in terms of sales and profitability. So making sure you understand that. You're looking at your average pricing, your average deal size, and then aligning your costs with those revenues, some of the things that Len talked about today. This is really what's key. And here's the three top mistakes that I see people making. They're out there selling ingredients instead of chocolate cake. And I'm saying now, um, with what's happening in our industry and will continue to happen in the next three to five years, if you're skewing up everything you're selling, I, I think you're going to get run over out there. Okay? So having too many choices and options, that's not what clients need. They need the end result, and they need you. Or as I like to say, in most businesses, the customer is always right. In our business, the customer's almost always wrong, and we're the one who has to tell them, okay? So they get confused between telling you what they want, really what they want is some end result, okay? Uh, Neil, they want to be, their data to be protected. It's your job to tell them, right, how to do that. Um, and finally, your price uh, is too low. In almost all cases, I can tell you, your price is too low. And if you address it with packaging and bundling the way we talked about today, I can tell you unequivocally, and we have members in every single marketplace, in every English-speaking and some non-English-speaking uh, countries uh, on this planet that are able to get the right packaging at the right price using some of the techniques we talked about. So um, we'll take a couple questions. Uh, if anybody, if you have questions right now, you can enter them. Um, but real quick, I'll, I'll tell you about why people do business with True Methods. We're a proven business transformation um, process. We're going to help you define your company way. And with that, show you how to use that to sell more recurring revenue and sell it at a higher price. That's going to dramatically increase your margins and ultimately, if you're a business owner, help you achieve a level of financial independence. And here's the way we do it. We have two pieces. Um, our starter kit, which is um, eight, over eight hours of web videos, packaging examples, pricing examples, sales tactics, how to convert customers, sales playbooks, goal calculators performance indicators, 
an awesome business plan template, how you can do a business plan in just, in just a couple hours. And um, with that, and it's brand new, our new starter kit just came out this year. So we launched in 2009, and we just updated all this content. And right now, for the first 90 days, you'll have a dedicated community specialist that will take you through with a syllabus and have a call with you every two weeks and guide you through this process. So when you end that period, you'll have your sales plan, you'll have your packaging and pricing aligned, and you'll have your business plan uh, in place. Once you get through that, we uh, have our Growth Tracks program, our monthly program, where we do two live webinars a month. You're able to ask us questions through our portal, get a lot of uh, uh, accountability and support. And we've been doing it for uh, over four years. So we have 90 hours of role-based content for sales, service delivery, command, all the things we talked about today, packaging and pricing. And normally the way um, we sell this is $22.95 is that starter kit, and then $3.99 a month is our growth tracks. And so what we're doing today is um, we're going to waive that up front and reduce that monthly fee to $3.49. So here's how simple it is. Um, you want to give us a try, we'll give you access to everything. You just put your credit card in for $3.49 a month, and we have no term agreement. So we're month to month. And to sweeten the deal, if you sign up or renew with Intronus, they will pay for your first three months of True Methods for you. That's the commitment they're making to your business. With Neil, that's outstanding, my friend. Hey, we truly believe in what you, uh, what you do, Gary, and you, you definitely help these managed service providers kind of get command of their business. So we're more than happy to help uh, in that regard. We're excited. Awesome. And so here's how you, the first 10 attendees who send an email to gary.promo, at truemethods.com, that's T-R-U methods, no E in true, gary.promo, truemethods.com, uh, with the subject line, sign me up, um, we'll send you the instructions um, that you can go to our website and be able to take advantage of this uh, promo. So uh, we ran pretty close to the top of the hour, um, but Neil, if we look over here, um, there's a couple questions uh, that we had here. One person was saying that... Um, Currently, when they do their packaging per computer basis, it's about $30 per computer once they get over 60 computers for that location. And do you think this is an effective as a way to package and price? Uh, I'm going to say no. Um, I, I can't give you all the calculations behind this, <clears throat> but I can tell you just the support part of it, just answering the phones and dealing with tickets for an average MSP, um, it is going to reduce your margins um, at thirty dollars you won't even make money on that besides the proactive stuff so I, I'm confident in saying that um, you don't always make it up all in scale and your average costs um, are higher uh, than thirty dollars um, I know looking at our members their average cost when they look at the four delivery areas we talked about support centralized services and tools um, the proactive network administration and VCIO is about thirty between $35 and $40 a seat. And so you can see that that would be higher than, than what he's charging there, Neil. And that's a good example of someone who has the right intentions, but again, they're out there at a price where they're not going to be able to deliver and get margins on the other side. And um, I'm sure, uh, Neil and Len, you guys see that every day, right, where people don't always know the costs? Yeah, I think, you know, I looked at that myself, Garen, Neil, and... Uh you know, I've got a little ex pricing exercise where if you're supporting 250 desktops, not including servers, routers, uh, you know, you could make a case that a bundle of six primary services could cost you $23, meaning cost you as a service provider, but you've got to have those 250 under management. You have to have them locked down, and it doesn't include picking up the phone, so you, you can definitely begin to see, you know, as you add in time to pick up the calls and you put that body cost in there, especially if you're not doing that on a time of material, that $30 is probably nowhere near the cost to cover that. So I, I, I advise this person to take a look at the autotask.com website, hit the on-demand uh, location, and take a look at the pricing webinar, and you'll understand why you might not be making money there. And I remember one of my first clients, Gary, after selling my, my business and I worked as a consultant, one of my first clients, a solution provider, said, gee, Len, I've already moved to managed service. Not sure why I'm not profitable or why I need you, but I'm making 30 grand a month in revenue or generating 30 grand a month in revenue, but I'm not making any money. 
and when we all work it out, he should have been charging and generating about 60000 in revenue. He should be locking down and standardizing the environment and really packaging and standardizing. So it was pretty interesting, all the things you covered, and looking at that number, you just see a lot of folks got to just get a little education out there, and, and it'll make a world of difference in, in their pricing model. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to sell at the right price if you don't know your cost, you don't have the confidence. One of the things we do in our program is something that I call macro and micro economics. And on the, micro, on the macro side, we show people how to attach every role and responsibility to top line revenue. And on the micro side, we give people a formula where they can calculate their average cost per seat. And when they see it, it's an eye-opener. And not only does it affect their margins, but it affects their sales in a positive way. Because the next time they know their costs and they're in front of someone who says, hey, well, the other vendor says they can do it for 30% less. Well, no, they can't. Okay? <laughs> it, it doesn't work that way. And so knowing what your costs are on a macro and on a micro basis are really key so that you can make informed decisions about your, about your pricing. So, awesome. Okay. Uh, well, Neil, um, if anybody else has any other questions, um, you know, they can go ahead and either go to an, in, in, in Tronus or Autotask, or they can send them over to, to, to us as well, depending upon what the question is. But um, we, we came a little bit over the hour on things, but um, I, th I think this was a great event. I'm hoping everybody got some value out of it, Neil. No, I, I think uh, a lot of good questions, a lot of engagement. I think a lot of people got... Uh, you know, great engagement out of it. And for anyone whose questions we weren't able to get to, uh, we'll follow up after the webinar. Um, and as Gary had said, if you have any uh, additional questions uh, for Intronus, you can email myself, first initial, last name, and Bradbury at Intronus.com or sales at Intronus.com. Awesome. Okay. Hey, Len, it was great working with you, man. Yeah, great working with you too, Gary and Neil. Appreciate it. And uh, uh, look forward to the next one for sure. Okay. Take care, everybody. See you guys.